Hello, welcome to Sportworks Kingdom Moments. Thrilled you could join us here on a Monday. We know we're starting a week, but we're actually finishing in our ESV Bible here, our, our letter from Paul to the Church of Philippi. We will finish it out today, kind of verses 14 through 23. Um, and then as we just kind of go through different seasons of life, and this one being quite unique that we're in right at the moment, that, that may, may be the one that changes a lot of things more than any other we've been through, um, those changes of season give us a chance to kind of reflect, give us a chance to look back, give us a chance to be grateful, to give thanks. It causes all kind of different evaluation. And and, and certainly at the end of a season, we have a lot of that. You know, it, it's almost a, a numbing effect when a season comes abruptly to an end. In athletics, you know, you, you get into tournaments and things within baseball, you know, you're Unless you win the whole thing, you're going to end this the season with a loss in, in most cases. And so all of a sudden you think you've got another day and another day until you don't have another day. And, and suddenly, gosh, you're looking at guys that, that you've invested four or five years with that you may not see very often again. And you've done everything together for that amount of time. Well, well, Paul Paul has gone through different seasons. You know, we, he's had three missionary journeys he, he's on the, the kind of end of things. He, he doesn't know exactly where it's going to end, but he's in prison in Rome, which you know is, is where things are. He's not going to be taking any more journeys from there. Um, but, but as he's remembering and, and writing in this close to, to these folks in the Philippines, Philippians, not Philippines, and Philippians, he, he is grateful for them. They, they have been incredible partners. When we started this letter, we said that this, this letter, more than any other's, it's not one that has much correction in it. It is mostly about encouragement and thanks. There's there's some guidance in it and wanting them to continue on to finish strong with. But the fact is, they, they've done a great job and, and been very much uh, behind Paul and, and helping in all the ways that you expect a church uh, to, to be able to help and, and even then some. But anyway, let, let's jump into these words. I kind of stopped us. At an odd place yesterday, just because because there was a, a theme in all that, but the theme continues. He he started back up in verse ten of how he rejoices greatly at, that that they've been concerned about him again and gotten involved in helping. And and so in verse fourteen, yet it was kind of you to share my trouble, and you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. They, they, they were a group that right from the very beginning, he didn't have to strong arm, he didn't have to, and, and he wasn't about that anyway, but he didn't have to kind of, there weren't five stewardship months of teaching in a row. <laughs> they, they quickly just said, hey, we, it, it made sense that they would help this guy who came and went through all kind of trouble and all kind of things to get to them, to stay with them, to share, to teach, and, and to bring them this great news and this great message. You know, I know we get frustrated at church if, when, when there's a lot of talk on, on giving. And honestly, there shouldn't have to need to be. Um, when, when we understand the gospel and what Jesus has done for us, we, we ought to have hearts that are ready to share and, and know that all that we have is His. And we share abundantly out of what He's provided for us. And sometimes we can share more, more than we can others. Again, I, I don't want to get... Uh, hung up on, on, hey, it's a tithe and it has to be this and some percentage. We, we get really out of whack on some of that when, when we try to bring old covenant laws and regulations and, and then don't even bring them in fully. But anyway, I, I hope hope we get that we're supposed to be about helping uh, the, those that, that God's used in our lives. Um, and, and certainly the church, hopefully, it's being used in your life and in your giving to know that they're doing great things around the community and, and sharing the gospel. But anyway... He's thankful for the folks in Philippi. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. And, and there is that, that when, when we're a part of God's work and we're the ones helping to give of what he's given to us, we, we benefit in that. That's in anything that we do to serve. When we jump in to help somebody, we're always the ones that benefit the most out of that. I just, I found it, Again and again and again, whether it's a friend who's ill that, that you jump in to help out, whether it's, it doesn't matter, fill in the blank. But specifically when we're doing it out of an obedience to God and, and, and his 
gifting us and giving us the ability to go and be a help. When we go help, we're the ones blessed by it. So I, I pray again that with your resources, your time, your finances, your relationships, your stuff, that, that you would look to follow God in all of that. And preach yesterday. The, the reality is we, we can't serve God unless we are following Jesus. And, and so we, we can do things, but, but we're not serving him unless we're following him. And, and Paul has laid that out in here, but, but let's, let's move on. Verse 18, I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied. Having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. He's, he's again just giving them so much thanks for them sending the gifts they sent and the person they sent with the gifts in Epaphroditus. He has blessed Paul. And where we, we looked back earlier, or Paul would have been heartbroken because Epaphroditus was sick and near death, and thankfully God healed him. And, and Paul kind of wants to hurry and send him back so that he makes it back to them and makes it back well because it would crush him if Epaphroditus didn't make it back to them. And so so he's thanking them again and thanking God again in it. And then verse 19 is a wonderful promise we have. And my God will supply every need of yours according to the riches, according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I'll read it again, 19. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. So he kind of closes. We're, we're going to get a final greeting in just a second. But but the fact of the matter is he, he knows that God provides. He's used these people to provide his needs. He knows that they're going to share of what they have from God to provide for one another's needs. All of it ultimately coming from God. And he's just, again, making that statement that we have a God who is rich in what he has. He's also rich in his mercy and his grace, and he takes care of us. But often that, that, that may come humbly through somebody else. It may come through us being arms and legs and help for each other. Uh, but, but in Paul's case, he's like, look, I, I learned the secret of being content when I had plenty, when I had nothing. But I always knew God was going to take care of me. And he still knows while in jail that God's going to take care of him. And it's ministered greatly through these people sending some gifts and sending the person of Epaphroditus. We know Timothy had been there as well because we looked at Paul thanking for all that. But, but then we jump to a final greeting. It says, Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me greet you. Oh, it's all, all of you that belong to this body, to this group that follows Jesus in Philippi. Greet, greet all of them for me. And and. Timothy and Epaphroditus, who I'm about to send your way, and others that are here greet, greet you as well. And he's got a credible comment in here. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. <laughs> Remember, Caesar's in charge of all of Rome. Paul got sent there as a prisoner, but while he's there under house arrest, what do you think Paul's doing while he's there? The guards that are kind of chained <laughs> and assigned to him, do you think they maybe heard about Jesus? Not only do we see that they obviously did, but we see that the, there have been those in that group that have come to know Jesus and now follow him. And, and he's sending greetings from them. How, how incredible is that? If you, if you were tossed in jail for your faith or for any other reason that was seemed wrong, which this was, they had no charge against him, what would you be of the mindset where you'd be positive, continuing to follow Jesus and sharing the hope you have in him? Uh, what an incredible testimony that there are now brothers in Christ in that Roman guard with these folks in Philippi and, and around the whole region. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. He opens often with grace and peace, and here he closes that it's about the grace of Jesus, that, that it's always about, and it's all about that. Is that what it's all about for you? Paul's given us just some incredible stuff as we journeyed through this letter. I pray you'd go back and, and read through it. I'm only talking a couple pages. That you'd read through it, hopefully with fresh eyes and, and, and new ears and a new heart and, and ready to receive the things Paul has said. Uh, but I, I pray that we would, man, I mean, the, the other day, the things that, that he hit us with, that we'd rejoice always. Uh, chapter 3, that we'd run a race um, that we'd be running with perseverance, that we'd be strained, straining to get across the finish line, that our eyes would be on the finish. Again, it's on Jesus. And that we dwell on what is pure and lovely and excellent and praiseworthy, that, that we would dwell on those things, that we would 
you know, again, just continue to be about sharing the hope that we have in him, that we'd be like Christ and, and that we would consider the needs of others above our own, that we we go on and on. They're, they're in there. I'd ask for you to go back and read through that again prayerfully. But I'm thankful for you. Pray that God is changing your heart and showing you more and more of who he is. But let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and love you. Thanks for the chance to be in your word, to, to hear again from, from Paul and gosh, the incredible news of guards that have come to know you and and, and just his continual influence and, and, and having poured into people who continue to, to supply his needs through this church. We just thank you for the, you know, we can go back in Acts and see the people that you called out that made up this early church and for the fruit that comes. Lord, I pray that we would be part of a body that would be challenging and growing together, that we are making that kind of difference in the town that we live in, in the homes that we live in, on the teams that we're in, and on and on that goes, so that we would be a light in a dark place, that we would shine with the hope that you've given us. And again, we just pray that at the end that you receive all glory and honor, that it be about your kingdom come, that your authority rules this place, rules our hearts, and it's very clear to those that look at us that, that you are the authority that we follow. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you all so much, and we'll figure out where we go tomorrow.